Hi, welcome to Ethereal Mechanics video number 39. Uh, this gets a little bit mathy. This is the antimatter effect. Sounds actually more impressive than it really is when you get to see it. So in the new electromagnetism gateway model for we're going to introduce the new electromagnetism gateway model for a hydrogen atom. This model is used to demonstrate the antimatter effect which is present in all matter that contains both positive and negative protons. Note, mass was murdered in the previous video. Okay, this will be the last time we discuss mass. I hope. Uh, the reason why I'm still discussing it is because it makes sense in the context of, of this material. That. So let's recap the new, e ele new electromagnetism electron. Okay, as you remember, we had two negative charges in orbit about a central point, and they orbited at the speed of light. And by plugging into this simple equation, we could calculate the inertia, or what we say mass, of the electron, which is 9.109 blah 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 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And it was so simple, a phys even a physicist can do it. Let me show you the new electromagnetism proton. Same thing. So what we do though is we same amount of charge, it's just the opposite polarity, same velocity of rotation. And so what we do is we plug those into the equation and solve for the radius or the diameter of the particle. This would be the diameter. This is the radial distance between the two, not the radius of the proton. I should really should have that P there. And this, and you say, well, that you know, that's cheating. You're 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 deriving this from the observation, which is in violation of the, the the rules of acquisition. Yes, it is. But watch what happens. This will knock your socks off. If we then put the electron, okay, the electron has the radius times ten to the minus thirty-one. Now the electron has the ra I'm sorry. The electron has a radius of 2.8 times 10 to the minus 15, or the diameter rather. The diameter, the radius between the two charges is the diameter of the particle is times 10 to the minus 15, where the diameter of the new electromagnetism proton is times 10 to the minus 18, which means that the electron is about a thousand times bigger than the proton. Well, that seems backwards, but let's see where this goes. Remember, these are just uh, uh, gateway models. And so the new electromagnetism hydrogen atom is very simple. It's just a proton concentric to an electron. It's pretty simple. And let's add up all the stuff. Now remember that the masses, okay, the mass of the proton was due to the two charges being very two light charges being very close to each other and has a very high mass and that mass is the mass of one proton well, let me just put p for mass of proton okay and then these two light charges at a much much greater distance because they're at a much 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 greater and this is like you know thousands of times this this is almost these are almost sitting right on top of each other if you drew this to scale so you get the mass of an electron too. Okay, so now we have these two interacting with each other and these two interacting with each other. But now we have this positive negative charge interacting with this positive charge. But because this distance is half of this distance, then this effect should be twice the effect that this guy has on this guy. And therefore, this effect should be twice the mass of an electron but because the charges are opposite this is going to be minus okay and the effect from this guy to this guy is also going to add a minus 2 e and then you have to take this guy times this guy and then this guy times this guy and so you get two more minus 2 e's again the reason why this is 2 e is because the mass of an electron is due to the distance here. If the, and because distance is proportional, if you go half the distance, and since distance is, the, is in the denominator, then half the distance means twice the mass. Okay, and that's why we say this has 
and because the charges are opposite it's minus the mass. So let's see where we get with this. If we add all this up we're going to get P minus 7 electrons. So let's go and add up the mass of a proton minus the mass of 7 electrons. The mass of a proton minus the mass of 7 electrons. We take these values and we end up with what, that the mass of the hypothetical hydrogen atom should be 1.66 that thing times 10 to the minus 27. But to get it to molar mass for comparison purposes we multiply the above by Avogadro's number this and we end up with 0 0.00100346 kilograms per mole. But uh, scientists like to put this into grams per mole. That's the normal. And so we multiply by a thousand and this is the number we end up with for our hypothetical model. 1.003436 grams per mole. So let's compare that. Okay, we have to compare it to what is the mole of the isotope of hydrogen that has no neutrons. And the isotope of hydrogen that does not have a neutron is one gram per mole. And our answer was 1.00343. This is awesome for a mere gateway model. Absolutely awesome. Now for comparison, one of you might say, well, okay, well, what would the atomic mass be if we just added up an electron and a proton? What kind of, you know, grams per mole would we get? And the answer is 1.00783 grams per mole. And let's put those together side by side. So the real hydrogen with no neutron is one gram per mole. The addition of the mass of an electron and proton is larger in mass than the hydrogen atom which there's nothing different. This is an electron and proton and this is an electron and a proton. But this has more mass than this. How can that be? Where did the mass go? Well the physicists come up with this bozo excuse of saying well the energy's in the binding energy and blah blah blah. No. It's, it's electromagnetic physics. It's simple physics. It's so simple that a child can do it. The new electromagnet explains the effect, so it's not quite accurate. And when we get to the protonic version of the hydrogen model, the 343 discrepancy, it will be, it's very easy to show where that, where, why that's that way. Mostly it's because we're using a flat model of a hydrogen atom, and hydrogen atom isn't flat. That's the key difference right there. But an observant person would say, hey, wait a minute then are you saying that the electron is 1836 times the diameter of the proton? I mean if you divide the diameter of the electron with the diameter of the proton you get 13 or 1836. But everybody knows from school that electron is smaller than a proton. And I say well is it? Well let's look at the magnetic dipole moments. I'm going to call the MDPM in the later pages. Okay, what's the magnetic dipole moment? Well, magnetic, and this is a magnetic monopoles, remember. I told you in the other videos, magnetic monopoles do not exist. This is a magnetic dipole. A magnetic dipole moment is simply defined as a current enclosing an area. Simple as that. If you've got a current running around in a circle in an area, then the, all you have to do is multiply the current times the area, and that's your magnetic. It's simple as that. So let's compute the dipole moments of the new electromagnetism electron and proton. Well, um, this is if you, the I is the charge times the velocity divided by the circumference. And that would be QV over 2 pi r, where V is the speed of light, and the area is pi r squared. And if we put all that together, we get an answer of QC over 2 times r, which is, um, this is the radius of so that would be one half of the, uh, the diameters. But if we were to take the ratio of the electron to the dipole moment to the proton dipole moment, you end up back at 1836. So it shows that the magnetic moment should be proportional to the relative sizes between the electron and the proton. Well, let's look at the real ones. Okay, the published value of the electron dipole moment is 9.2 times 10 to the minus 24. The proton is 1.41 times 10 to the minus 26. The electron dipole moment is bigger than the proton dipole moment. 
the ratio is 658. Okay, their own measurements suggest that the electron is at least 658 times larger. This is in direct con contradiction to their own bullshit. Okay, and, and now, but just a disclaimer, these things were I found 15 years ago. I don't know. Uh, I pulled them out of uh, my paper, anyhydrogen.pdf, because I didn't feel like going looking for them again. The reason why I didn't feel like going and looking for them again is because they got 15,000 different measurements because they keep getting different answers all the time, and they can't explain why this is bigger than this. Okay, and so they keep thinking they're doing something wrong. No, you're not doing something wrong. Your idiot model of the electron is wrong. So I've gotten tired of trying to weed through all of their, well, it's this and it's that because of this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and also, the dual particle model has other benefits. It also solves a lot of problems that the, that the single particle model doesn't solve. Okay, it explains why an electron looks like it's in two places at the same time. Duh, maybe because it's two particles, Mr. Physicist. Why there is no wobble in the hydrogen atom due to the orbital atom? If you've got one particle and another particle whizzing around it, you would expect a wobble in the central particle. That's how they find planets, by the wobble of one planet around the, soul, the sun. Why is there no wobble in the hydrogen atom? Well, if you've got two objects orbiting uh, the center, then there's going to be a balance and it's going to be a wobble. I could go on and on and on and on. Okay, but the pretonic models, they're going to solve the discrepancies that I've shown, explain why it's difficult, also show why it's difficult for them to measure the magnetic uh, dipole moment. And one of the major reasons are if you measure it by applying a magnetic field to a particle, but a magnetic field is going to change the state of the particle. They don't even understand their own Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Okay, uh, and the pretonic model, the electron is close to the new electric electromagnetism model, but the pretonic proton is a little bit more involved. So the new electromagnetism electron model, I'm going to, you're going to find out it's actually very close to the real thing. So recap, antimatter is just a part of all normal matter. It's just negative induction. Uh, that the electron is larger than the proton is consistent with observations. Like I said, million times and a million times before, humans always seem to get stuff backwards before they get it right. And actually, this is so easy to hoping scientists brush it off as too simple to be true, then they won't plagiarize me. I would rather be ignored than plagiarized. So what's next? We're going to talk about the ghosts in the ether. And I'm still looking for other things I can release uh, before the new math construct comes out. I do have other videos in the pipeline I have didn't get to. One was about uh, um, an issue with the Earth video regarding uh, crude oil. And the other video there in the pipeline is a new Antenna Paradox video. Uh, thank you for donating. Please uh, give me a thumbs up. Uh, register. Is that the way we're right? Subscribe. You get the indication of videos when they come out. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Thank you.